in this world of outrage and offense, it seems we have forgotten about something vitally important, how we contribute to making others feel invisible. How do we make them feel invisible? Why do we sometimes feel invisible? Like we don't matter. No one loves us. Like the world would be a better place without us. Suicide does not need to happen. It's sad for sure that someone feels so undeserving that they choose to end their own life. Suicide happens for many various reasons, including but not limited to being diagnosed with an incurable disease, losing a job, a home, or a family member, being humiliated, being prosecuted for a crime they committed. But often it's because that person came up with this idea of unworthiness based on how they were treated by so-called friends and family. It comes from others not paying attention to them when they speak, not reaching out when, they, when you know they need help, not offering a shoulder to cry on if they need consoling, talking over them in conversation, ignoring them in preference to what you want to say or do, interrupting their conversations with others. Yes, we, we all make these errors in life. Our ego makes us think we're the most important person in the world. Sadly, it's only true in our own minds and you and I are just as important as everyone else. Sometimes feelings of unworthiness and being unloved stem from childhood. Being told you're nothing you'll never amount to anything. Abandonment, abandonment, sorry, <laughs> abuse, ridicule, teasing, bullying can all lead us to believe that we don't matter in the world. No one loves us. No one wants us. No one cares. Our world has turned into a rush, rush, I want it now kind of place. For instance, when we see someone we haven't seen for a while, we rush over with a huge smile and a loud voice to greet them and start up a conversation. However, that person may have already been in deep conversation with someone else. They could finally be getting to the crux of the conversation, the whole point of the subject, which could be about a number of different things like death of a family member health issues, family, friends, business, hobbies, travel, you have no idea what they're speaking so earnestly about. You just don't even think about it. You don't care. Because your desire comes before anyone else's. Now you've successfully derailed what may have been a life-altering conversation with your boisterousness. A conversation that's derailed like this often gets forgotten, but not by the person who needed that conversation. They now feel invisible, as though they don't matter at all. It can be devastating, especially if it happens over and over again. Sometimes there's no private place handy to have these conversations, so they happen in public at the rec center, the gym, the restaurant, the mall, the street, social gathering. I'm Mark Rakoski. Many of you know me on social media as Maggie. I've gone through feelings of abandonment, being unloved, unlovable, unimportant, forgotten, disrespected, ignored, and invisible. Now, I'm aware that most people won't see this and will never get it that they're making people feel invisible. But I needed to say this because it's an important lesson for all of us who are in a hurry and inadvertently cause distress to another. So another thing we do that makes people feel invisible is not paying attention. 
or giving the perception that we aren't paying attention. Examples of this are scrolling on your phone, reading a book, watching TV. If someone's talking to you, it's often something they feel is important to either them or you. Put the phone down, pause the TV, close the book, and pay attention to them. It's not that hard, and the conversation will not last forever. You can go back to your life. In fact, if it's a conversation with your spouse, who, heaven forbid, may pass before you, you'll remember those conversations and how you treated them. You'll wish you could redo those conversations, or better yet, have more of them. But unfortunately, the time may have passed forever. Making a person feel invisible is actually a form of abuse. No, we don't have physical scars to prove it, but it's what happens inside our brain that makes it abuse. Feeling invisible can cause a person to revert to suicide because they can no longer live with the voice inside their head that says they're worthless, unloved, unlovable, invisible, alone. So here are three points, action tips, if you will, that you can use to support your friends and their friends. Number one, if you feel compelled to interrupt a conversation to say hi, please wait until the current conversation comes to a halt. Not just a quick stop to catch a breath, but a definite conclusion. Before another topic is introduced, this is when it's common courtesy to interrupt. Not before, unless of course you are contributing to the initial conversation. Number two. If something pops into your head when in a group setting, don't just talk over someone who's already speaking. Not only is it rude, but it perpetuates the feeling of being unimportant, unloved, unworthy of attention and invisible. And number three, unless it's a stranger or someone soliciting for money, when someone wants to talk to you, do them the common courtesy of actively listening. After all, that's what you want for yourself, right? You want to be heard. Well, so do they. I'll leave you with a couple examples of what I'm talking about, and we'll use personal experiences just so you get the gist of what it feels like, and that it is, in fact, a real thing. A number of years ago, when I was first learning how to set up and use a WordPress site for my blog, oh, I was a technical non-whiz. <laughs> it was horrible. A friend said she'd teach me. It wasn't always convenient for her to meet at my place, and she didn't have room at her place. So sometimes we met up somewhere in between, maybe in the rec center. Well, one day in the rec center, we were discussing something vitally important in the setup sequence, deep in conversation, when a friend of hers strode up behind us and shouted out, Hi, it's so good to see you. It's been so long. Do you remember? And the conversation just carried on for there. I was totally ignored. The discussion was derailed forever. It wasn't just forgotten for the moment. It was forever. I was left A, without the answers I needed, and B, feeling invisible, unimportant, and just plain pissed off. Another experience, well, several actually, various conversations with other people and being shouted over as if I wasn't even there. And to top it all off, the person overriding the conversation wasn't even talking about the same thing. They just changed the subject completely, even though my sentence was only half done. Talk about rude. But rudeness isn't what this is about. Not only were they rude, but they again made me feel unimportant, unwanted, and invisible, and yes, pissed off. Now, if I were a different person, I may have spoken up and told them they were rude. But 
being raised without a voice to say what bothered me, never being able to voice discontent or unimportant emotions, I couldn't do that. I couldn't cause a scene. I could only feel deep inside myself what I was going through. In a room full of people, I often felt alone. Luckily for me, I'm resilient, can bounce back. But these feelings were never resolved, so they keep coming up over and over again. It's something I'll work on in, with AFT. But many people don't have that resource. They just feel worse and worse every time they're made to feel invisible. Here's the important message I'm trying to relay. If we believe suicide is a waste of life, perhaps we can make a small difference. We can't change everyone, but we can take some small steps to make life better for someone. Let's all promise to do what we can so others don't feel invisible, unloved, unlovable, unworthy, unimportant, forgotten, and ignored. I'm Mark Rakoski, and I'll see you in the next video.